Hey y'all, Irix guy here, and I wanted to follow up in regards to the Mavic Mini. You've probably seen my initial field test, and I do apologize, my first flight with the Mavic Mini, and several of my first flight videos, nothing to do with the Mavic Mini, but this camera that I'm filming the face on video portion with, it, it encountered issues. And you can check out my videos about that, totally unrelated, but this autofocus today should be on point. So we shouldn't have audio issues, we should not have camera issues with my camera on the ground that I'm using to uh, narrate. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get airborne. Uh, it is worth mentioning at the time of filming this, I have the most current Mavic Mini firmware installed. Uh, definitely something I always recommend, keeping your, uh, your firmware on your drone current to be, to be safe and responsible. So let's go ahead and get airborne and just kind of talk about this. And you know, again, this is not the first field test. So I've had, you know, several hundred flights, probably probably a hundred or so with this drone. And it's just, it's been remarkable. Haven't had any issues, but I have encountered a few minor things and I'll talk about that. Let's go ahead and uh, hit record. I am filming in 2.7K because this drone will not, at least this model of the drone will not film in 4K. It tops out at 2.7K. So, but if you're watching this video in 4K, the face on video part you're probably well, you should be seeing in 4k if you've got a compatible display because i'm filming it in 4k but then i'm embedding the 2.7k footage into the 4k project so you know don't confuse yourself and say oh that that mavic mini is filming in 4k it's not i'm filming in 2.7k but i'm up converting to 4k when i embed within this 4k video project so let's get airborne here very nice, you know, just do your sticks down to the middle part. This thing handles so well. I mean, it's, it's basically, uh, and it is, I mean, it's just a miniature version of, of Mavic 2, which is an awesome aerial platform. And as predicted, you know, at the time of this drone's release, a lot of, uh, a lot of countries did not treat a drone of this weight as something that has to be registered. But as, as we predicted, a lot of countries now are already starting to uh, regulate drones, even drones like this that are 249 grams. So, you know, check out my test where I weighed the Mavic Mini. I weighed it in my test. Got them on the cheap. But, uh, yeah, it actually, for me, it came nine grams so, but i mean i don't know if my scales are necessarily accurate let's kind of go at uh, 100 and 100 and we're going to continue to take it up here to a safe and responsible altitude again drone safety being the drone evangelist Drone safety is paramount. And if we're not all safe drone flyers, drone pilots, because you are a pilot. You know, when you're flying a drone, you're a pilot. You know, you're getting into that, into that air where other things fly around, birds and airplanes and helicopters and Batman, you know, everything. Now we're gonna stop we're at 388 feet. You know, we're not, I don't have a need to go to 400 feet. I'm gonna stop at 388. And we're going to fly backwards. Don't know if you remember the the old uh, DJI Phantom drones, but they, uh, if you were flying forward, often the uh, the props would go into view. So flying backwards with a DJI Phantom was a way to capture footage without introducing the props and or prop guards into the camera's field of view. So. With this drone, because of the way it's designed, so far I've been unable, whether flying forward or, or backwards, I've been unable to capture the props in the camera's field of view. And that's great because, you know, that'll ruin your, uh, that'll ruin your shot. So, you know, from a design perspective, this Mavic Mini is just a, a testament to the excellent R&D research and development 
that DJI has been able to pull off. And I mean, this thing is just, to be so small and so lightweight, it is worth mentioning, I flew a flight before this, a, uh, it was a wind test, because we're getting some gusts of wind, and I'm still at 66% battery remaining. I mean, the battery life, excuse me, the battery life on this thing is, I mean, it's outstanding. And the best part is, is that the batteries are very small and very lightweight as well. So, you know, to be able to carry a small and lightweight drone with a small and lightweight controller, and again, I mentioned it in other previous videos, but this controller feels a lot lighter than, than the Mavic 2 uh, or uh, Mavic Air or Mavic, uh, Mavic Air, Mavic 2, and definitely a lot lighter than the Mavic 2 smart controller. So, you know, this thing, the complete kit, you know, the controller, the aircraft, the battery, propellers, everything attached, the complete kit that you, you know, may throw in your backpack or camera bag or whatever, the complete kit is super light and super small. And that's the thing that, this, that attracts me the most to this drone. Because a lot of people have said, well, dude, you know, you've got the Mavic 2 Pro why why do you want oh there i am right there you've got the mavic 2 pro why do you want something like a mavic mini isn't that just kind of a a downgrade and and more like a toy well you know first of all you know don't confuse this being such a small and lightweight drone as being a toy it's definitely not a toy it's an aircraft and again you know i'm not a i'm not any you know form of law enforcement or anything like that but you know, there's a lot of countries where you may not have to register this drone. And again, I'm not saying that you don't have to, you know, check with your local government, see what your laws, your current laws and regulations are. But even though you may not have to register this drone, it's still not a toy. This is a, this is an aircraft. It can be very dangerous. So, you know, don't let the, and also don't let the size and weight fool you into thinking, well, it's, a, it's not a capable drone. Because as this video right here shows, you know, we've got cloudy conditions. I mean, the video is super smooth. The video is super crisp. Sure, it's not 4K. This tops out at 2.7K. But I mean, just look at how good this looks, you know, being embedded within a 4K video project. Yeah, I mean, I'm not filming in 4K with the drone. I am with this camera that that you see me on, but the drone is only filming at 2.7K. And to be able to film at 2.7K and capture this level of detail and just overall smoothness of the video. See, watch, when I let go here, you know, I've got my hands on a controller obviously, but the drone, I mean, it's, it's got a very stable hover. You know, there's minimal fluctuation. And that's, that's super important because if you've got, even if you've got a very high-end camera, if your video is, uh, is shaky, if it tilts around, you know, if it wobbles around a lot, that's going to degrade the performance. I mean, even with a lesser high-end camera, such as this 2.7K camera on the Mavic Mini, being able to capture footage that is smooth and... Uh, you know, just, I mean, just look at that. That's quality. And I mean, you can always take this footage and I'm gonna post some videos on this. They may already be up. So check out my website and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out all my Mavic Mini videos. But just some tips for editing Mavic Mini footage. You know, what do I do to edit my Mavic Mini footage to make it look even better than it does when it comes right out of the camera? Right out of the camera, this footage is great. You know, don't get me wrong, this footage is great. And for most people, this footage right out of the Mavic Mini camera is gonna be beyond acceptable and beyond jaw dropping. But for people that wanna further enhance it, check out, again, check out my videos, how to, well, I mean, how do I further enhance my Mavic Mini's footage? You know, things that I do like the saturation, you know, saturation being, like right now, you're looking at this grass or some that's kind of brown or some that's greener. You know, I mean, there's, there's always different colors. When you do, uh, when you're in a rather dull, 
dually colored environment, if you adjust your saturation, you can make the video look more colorful. So, you know, that's one thing I might do. Another thing I might do is adjust the, uh, oh, the wind's picking up now. Let's stop and hover. Um, oh yeah, there's significant wind. And the drone's at 80 feet and it's handling it well. And the wind typically is stronger further above the ground. So, you know, this is a real testament to how well this drone can handle wind. And obviously don't, you know, don't throw it up in extreme wind, but you know, with a moderate breeze like this, this thing is, oh, now it's really picking up. Look at this. It is really picking up. Yeah. So I'm gonna let it just sit there and hover and we'll see how it goes. And, uh, but yeah, you might adjust your, what's called exposure. Oh, now it's really strong. And exposure is just the brightness because you can have, you've probably heard the terms underexposed or overexposed and that's applicable for both video and photography. And if you're, if you're underexposed, it's gonna look really dark. And if it's overexposed, it's gonna to look too bright and washed out. So, you know, this camera, again, the Mavic Mini's camera does an exceptional job automatically, but I can further enhance my footage and make it look even more professional by adjusting exposure, saturation. So, you know, check out my other video for, these, for those tips. You know, this is just, this is just another field test video. Again, an honest Mavic Mini field test video after owning the drone for many weeks, after flying the drone for a hundred or so times, you know, these are my thoughts. You know, the good, the bad. I don't really have anything bad to say, but to keep things honest, you know, I will say that, and if you watched one of my previous field test videos, to keep things honest, you'll know that I did briefly lose connection with my Mavic Mini, but it quickly initiated return to home it got back into range and I was able to regain manual control of the Mavic Mini. So it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a problem. It did happen, but that's the only thing that has occurred since, uh, since, you know, I've been flying this drone. And I mean, again, I've, you know, I've been, I've flown it a hundred times or so. So it's, uh, it's holding up really well. Uh, interesting interesting comment that I wanted to throw out, and this is not related to the Mavic Mini, but the Mavic 2 Pro, uh, that's funny, you know what just popped up? It says max power load reached, and it went, it went by. That's the first time I've seen max power load reached within the app, but everything seems to be behaving fine. Obviously, if it encountered something catastrophic, it would just crash into a field and wouldn't damage anything or wouldn't damage anybody because I'm in a safe and responsible flying location in this field that you've seen in a lot of my videos, Phantom Through Presence. So, but yeah, just a, just a very, very nice drone. I mean, what blows my mind, and sure, I would like to have 4K, but what blows my mind is how good the 2.7K looks, but not just how good it looks, but how smooth and, uh, and stable the video is. I mean, look at this right here. There's wind blowing now, and I'm just going into slow creep. And um, I mean, it's just awesome. So, you know, I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a fantastic drone, and I I don't have anything to say about it. I you know my comments will be more of you know for a future version. You know, what would I like to see? And obviously, I'd like to see 4K. I think the battery life as it is is uh, is phenomenal. I mean, I've flown, I've been flying this entire time. And again, I flew a flight before this and I've still got 30% battery remaining. The ability to recharge this drone by way of micro USB is a game changer because I'm able to top it off in the field using a battery bank. Maybe I don't want to carry extra batteries with my Mavic Mini. I just want to have the one battery attached to it and then take a battery bank and then, you know, recharge it from the battery bank. And with a solar battery bank like I use when I'm backpacking, I can pop it out and recharge using the battery bank and then recharge the battery bank thanks to the sun. You know, the sun's that big, uh, big bright thing in the sky and it's free. You know, at least, at least the sun is currently free. You know, if they can find a way to tax use of the sun, I'm sure they probably will. So, 
But you know, that's, that's a huge convenience. That's honestly one of my favorite features with the Mavic Mini is being able to use USB to recharge. And what I hope is that when we see future versions of the Mavic Mini and then also future versions of the Mavic, uh, the Mavic Pro line, like I'm, I'm expecting Mavic 3 to have USB recharging capability. I, I'm also expecting Mavic 3 to have, um, to have modular camera without the use of tools required. And obviously something as good or better than the one inch sensor Hasselblad camera that is uh, present on, uh, on the Mavic 2 Pro. But yeah, this thing's still battery life remaining. We're still at 23%. And something I'm curious about, and I really haven't flown this thing down really low, the battery life really low, is when the battery life gets low, how quickly does it does it go to zilch and we're just going to test that within this video i mean you know we got time you know there's no need to rush here this is not a this is not an edited drone experience like you'll like you'll see from a lot of other channels this is a just some dude in the field with a drone and and uh, showing you what it does what it does well what it does poorly so it's uh yeah i mean I'm, okay now it's at 20 percent battery now it's starting to beep low battery return to home promptly. Now, if you remember the uh, DJI Spark, that drone was small and lightweight, but when it got low, it got, I mean, I almost crashed in the lake because the battery, uh, the battery was uh, going down real rapidly. It says low battery, low battery aircraft returning to home after countdown. So see, it says returning to home after countdown. And we're not, we're not putting anything at risk here. So let's see what this, what this does, it says landing. So we're gonna abort. That is worth mentioning. I would not recommend landing this in grass because this drone is so small that the propellers could make contact with the grass. These, prote these propellers are ultra lightweight. So if they made contact with the grass, it may damage them. I'm still using the original propellers that came with it. So, I'm gonna stop the recording there. We got uh, about 16 minutes and 20 seconds of 2.7K video. But uh, yeah, the, the propellers, let me grab the drone and we'll continue this. Go ahead and get out of my app here so I don't eat my eat my battery on my phone but yeah the propellers on this thing you know as you as you've seen in in my previous videos oh and powering it off is easy you just tap tap and then hold and then that goes off propellers are very small very lightweight you know when i first unboxed this drone i falsely assumed that this may be a flimsy design and the reality is it's not uh, these propellers i don't have any nicks any bends i mean it's uh they're holding up really well so that was a concern i had you know due to the ultralight nature of this drone but it is worth mentioning you got to use a little tool drive uh, tool driver a little screwdriver to to replace them if you had to replace them but i haven't had to replace them yet again these are the original propellers that were attached and have had i've had zero issues with the propellers so i mean this drone except for that, again, where I had the brief signal loss and it initiated a return to home in a previous field test video. That's the only issue I've encountered with this drone. It's, uh, it's reliable, you know, like one might expect uh, from a DJI drone. And it's, again, I mean, the portability of this is just, is absolutely incredible. And popping the, uh, This little thing's very intuitive. What I still don't understand is why do they make these camera guards transparent? I mean, obviously you would not want to fly with this. You would not even want to power your drone on to, you know, if you do like I do and, and power your drone on and stick a, a micro USB in its rear end to uh, download the videos and photos. I always take this off for that. I don't want my drone to be powered on with this in place. 
And I think one thing that DJI could do better with is to make this a solid and bright color. You know, number one, the solid, instead of, you know, translucent like this is, transparent, whatever you want to call it, that would imply, hey, you can't fly with this because obviously the camera's not going to be able to see through something that's solid color. So I think it's important for, for that reason. I also think it's important because this is easy to lose. If I drop this out here in this field, this color would be harder to spot. Whereas if it was bright orange or bright red or bright yellow, it'd be easy to see it. You know, and that bright color would also function as a visual reminder to, hey, take this thing off before you fly. You know, don't be an idiot. Take it off. Or if you drop it, something bright, bright orange, bright red, bright yellow, be easier to spot in the grass. So, you know, small things, but if there's something small I can complain about, I'll complain about it. You know, as mentioned in a previous video, and this is not a complaint, this is just an observation, there's no rubberized type tips on the feet, which makes sense because their goal with this, their primary objective with this drone was to create something that's ultra small and ultra lightweight, and they accomplished that. And any additional piece of rubber, you know, even a little cover on the back for the SD card slot and micro USB slot, any of those additional pieces would have added to the overall weight of the drone. So they kept the weight down, understandably so. You know, this is a remarkable engineering feat, and, you know, DJI is doing what they do best, and that's drones. I do like DJI's action cameras, but I still don't think, as, as much as I hate to say this, I don't think that DJI is the leader when it comes to action cameras. But when it comes to drones, DJI is the leader by a long shot. So, you know, call me a DJI fanboy, whatever you want to do, that's fine. We're all subject to our to our own opinions. But yeah, this concludes this field test. And if you're looking for the Mavic Mini, Mavic Mini accessories, I got the various bundles, all kinds of good stuff. Other drones too, Mavic 2, uh, Mavic Air, DJI Phantoms. Expand this video's description and then click the link there and you can find where to order it all online. And uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's youtube.com forward slash iRickSky. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Captain Irix Guy here. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash Irix Guy. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.